First of all, on behalf of Father Abbott and the monks and nuns of our communities, I wish to, I wish to wish you fathers a happy Father's Day. And if all the fathers present will kneel, I will give them a blessing. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentis, Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, descendit super vos et mani et semper. And may this blessing help you and guide you now and in the future. Amen. Brethren, I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory to come that will be revealed in us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. My good people, with all the suffering going on around us, both outside our families and inside our families, with all the pain and the suffering, the terror, the fear, and not only does it exist, but every day it seems to get worse. The more we pray, the worse it gets. We go to bed and say, things can't possibly get worse. We wake up the next morning, and they are. And I know the tendency sometimes is to question, God, are you there? Are you listening? Don't you see what's happening to your world? Don't you care? My good people, he cares. And if he could feel pain now, his heart would bleed again for us, especially for those of us who are striving to remain faithful to him. Part of the problem, I'm afraid, is we see everything with our narrow vision. We too often forget that God sees with an infinite vision. He sees what we cannot ever see in this life. He alone knows how to bring good out of apparent evil. My good people, sometimes we question the necessity of pain and sorrow, all suffering, whether it be physical or mental. But if suffering were not necessary, would God the Father have asked it of his own son? If suffering were not necessary, if there had been a better way, don't you think our Lord would have taken it? But what did he do? He bore his cross for love of us. I know that the next statement I am making is going to sound strange, but it really isn't. All the sufferings in our life, all the pain and the anguish and the hardship and the torment and the fear, we tend to look at them as curses, as evils, 
But my good people, in reality, if we could only understand, they are really precious, precious gifts from our Lord. They are his will, not necessarily his positive, active will, but he does permit it. Because the more we suffer, the more Christ-like we are, provided we accept our crosses in the same spirit as our Lord accepted his. But we tend to look at the individual sufferings in whatever form they come as individual evils. When we pray, we think the idea of carrying our cross is wonderful. But we fail to see that these individual little evils, as we call them, constitute our cross. If we would but accept them, cheerfully even, which I know is very difficult, but at least accept them as coming personally from the hands of our Lord and bear them in union with our Lord, carrying our crosses as he carried his out of love. I know that sometimes we become impatient. We think we can't possibly bear any more. We demand of God answers to our prayers. But we make the mistake of demanding, first of all, and then of demanding the answer we think our prayers deserve not the answer he wants to give us. So we add to our crosses. We're fighting the cross at the same time we're trying to carry it. When we pray, let us pray not for deliverance from our crosses, but let us pray rather that our will be united totally to the will of our Lord, that he helps us to carry our crosses the way he himself would carry them if he could take them from us. And believe me, my good people, he would do this, that, if he could. He will help us as much as we let him. But we can't sit back and expect the cross to disappear. No, we have to pick that cross up. Thank you, Lord. And step by weary step, go along the path of Calvary. When we resist our crosses, we don't get rid of our cross. We just add to it. We're carrying two crosses. And while we're fighting our crosses, we tend to fight those around us who are adding to our crosses. But I think we often forget that while those around us may be adding to our crosses, are we any better? Are we not adding to our neighbor's crosses? In the holy rule, it is brought out that we are hair shirts unto each other. We are crosses unto each other. So instead of picking at our neighbor for being a cross unto us, rather let us work to make sure we're not a cross to him.
by good people remain strong no matter what, no matter how weak you feel, no matter how discouraged you become, whether physically or mentally or spiritually. Know that God does care. And he himself told us, I will not let you be tested beyond your strength. The problem is, we're looking at ourselves with our eyes and we're misjudging ourselves because we're counting only on our puny strength. But we must count on God's strength too. As long as we give it everything we've got, God will not let us down. So my good people, when you say your prayers, when you offer your daily acts as your prayer, offer them in a spirit of love and faith, knowing that no matter how bad things get, God will ultimately bring good out of all the apparent evil. May God bless us all, and may we all remain strong. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.